Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom associated with BPAL Picks. If you like to make lots of money on betting, BPAL Picks is for you. Up green, if you know what green is, making money three years in a row. Today, we're going to be looking at predictions for the Central, standings prediction for the Central. We did standings predictions for all the other divisions. We're at the Central now. Interesting division indeed. Can't wait to get into it. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the Pearl of Wisdom Show. Subscribe to my channel right now. I'm going to be on with Peyton on the radio tonight. Subscribe and I'll send you a link. So you can be part of it. I do the uh, vocal analysis, and he is the play-by-play -play guy. The frolic is intense. There's a little Perlo dance for you. Let's slip over to the first. Okay, we're going to go from last place to first place. And the first team we're looking at, There, there you go. Took a little bit. Computers are awesome, aren't they? Aren't they, though? Yeah. Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, this is not a surprise to anybody out there. It's like everybody was probably going Chicago, Chicago. But apparently it is a surprise to some because some people have Arizona there. Um, and I can understand that. We'll look at that in a little while. But the reason why I'm taking Chicago, okay, first of all, Richardson. Luke Richardson's taking a team that wants to tank, first time he's ever coached in the NHL as a head coach. That's not, that's a recipe for making sure you're last place. That's for sure. Could be a beast, but I mean, that's a tall task for a rookie coach. The good thing about it is everything is off the, t like there's no pressure on him. He's going to get at least two years as a coach here. You, if they come last place, everybody assumed they would. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem for him keeping his job. Look at the lineup. Athens, Seyu, Max Domi, and Patrick Kane. That is likely, that has to be the worst top six forward group for defense in the league. Defensively, that Patrick Kane is diabolical. Nobody wants to talk about it, I guess. Nobody wants to say anything because Patrick Kane is an icon in the NHL, United States as well, especially because he's from the United States, and he should be because he's done amazing things in his career. But he's never been that great defensively, and I'm not going to take it. That's, that doesn't really matter when you're throwing up points like he does usually, but he is so bad now. Like he used to be not bad, not too bad. Maybe a little bit below average, whatever. Now he might be the worst top six guy in the league and uh, as far as defense is concerned. No joke. His 92 points didn't make up for it. And guess what? Guess who controlled that line last year? Dabrinkat, who's no longer with them anymore. I think you're going to see a decline with Kane. Uh, Domi and Athanasiu, they they this is like their fourth or fifth organization each individually like there's a reason why every team doesn't want these guys and now they're on the top line of Chicago <laughs> yeah radish jonathan taves by the way kane and taves are probably out everybody knows it tyler johnson would not play in most teams at all let alone top 6 right now he's just a declining asset uh, Philip Kurashev is a player that plays in the NHL for the Chicago Blackhawks. Sam Lafferty, love his heart and all that stuff like that. But third line center, nay, 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 wouldn't make a lot of teams fourth line. I love Mackenzie Entwistle, Colin Blackwood, Buddy Robinson, Juha Kyra. These are all just barely NHL players. And they're all on one team. Like, not all, all, but. Certainly the bottom nine, for sure. Bottom six, for sure. Defensively, Alex Vlasic 
I don't think they wanted him to make the team. They tried to have him plus start in the minors. He's just too good in comparison to everybody else here. Uh, Seth Jones, horrible overpayment for a guy who is, again, diabolically bad defensively. Jack Johnson. It's Jack Johnson, man. He's not good anymore. Connor Murphy's great. Philip Roos. Who? What? I have no idea who that is. And Alec Regula, he's played in the AHL. He's a guy that's working his way up. Good for these guys to get an NHL paycheck, but this is a horrible, horrible lineup. Horrible. And then, just in case, maybe your goaltending will save you. Nay. Morazic. Peter Morazic. I didn't like him when he was in Carolina. That Carolina's incredible forward uh, for, forward defense that they have, top 12 forward defense that they have, and defense in general, so made them look good, just like they did Nedeljkovic. And really good. He went to Toronto, was terrible, got injured all the time, likely will again, just going by what normally happens with Mrazic. And that leaves you with Alex Stalock, who didn't play all year last year, has been a borderline NHL his whole career, and not much else after that. There's nothing here, man. There's nothing. They got guys that are injured like Jake McCabe and Caleb Jones, and that would make the team a little better. But they might as well make sure they're really, 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 really not injured. Because this team is wanting to go for the bottom, Played all their pieces like they want the bottom. Organizational tank. It's never a player tank, but organizational tank for sure. And this team is going to suck really bad. <laughs> really bad. Not much in the pipeline. Doesn't matter what's in the pipeline. It's all over. Chicago fans, sorry about that. Comment in the comment section if you got anything. We'll be excited in four or five years. If you get Bedard or whatever, then that'd be wonderful. But that's really all the hope I see in Chicago now. Uh, let's go to Arizona then. The uh, other team that is quite commonly put as the bottom of the basement. And I and I think most people would put them bottom-bottom because they're playing in the small arena. Actually, I don't think so. I think there's going to be an intimate experience to that arena, and I think the fans are going to help these guys out a lot. Also, this team has Turney as a coach, and he's a, I, last year he was brilliant. He puts in systems uh, that win. He's going to be absolutely fan He is a fantastic coach, and as this team grows, they're going to be fortunate to have him. But because they have them, they're probably going to pull out a few more wins than you would think. He really, un he's great system-wise. He seems fantastic at identifying the opposition's weakness and playing his pieces the best that they can. Now, the pieces themselves, yeah, they're not great, man, for sure. Clayton Keller, love the guy. He's, you know, a point-of-game player, but he's a, he's a man on an island all on his own. Nick Schmaltz is a great two-way centerman. Are very good one, anyways. Um, and after that, on forward, Travis Boyd shouldn't be there. He's third liner on any most teams on an average team. Uh, Lawson Kraus, he must be really like leadership wise because really on the ice he's totally overrated. Now when you play him with all the guys you see in Arizona, he looks really good. He got twenty goals last year. That's a lot for Arizona. And he's big. Everybody likes that. And he puts people into the boards. But he's really not that good defensively. And he's meh offensively. On most teams, he would be a third, maybe even fourth liner. Barrett Hayton, excited to see what this kid becomes. I like him. I like his overall game. Uh, he's worked his way into every year he's gotten that little bit better, a little bit better. Probably like a second line center is what his max is. But he's got a lot of heart. He skates well. He seems like a really good two-way guy that can put up points. Uh, Zach Cassian, I had, we had him in Edmonton. I'm telling you, the guy is no good. He's not certainly not supposed to be in a top six. 
And we're not going to go through everybody here, but Nick Ritchie, McBain, Fisher, that's a fourth line at best. Awesome. Dylan Gunther, watch that kid. I like. I want to watch that kid and see how he does. But Nick Bukestad and O'Brien on his line, I mean, why? They're, the fact that Dylan Gunther made this team tells you all you need to know about the rest of the team. This kid is not ready to be in the NHL. But they, get, they have to th- throw somebody in there. That's really what it seems like to me. On defense, it gets a little better. I, I like Janice, Janice Moser a lot, and he made the team. When they brought him up last year, he looked really, really good. Analytically, that lined up with my eye test, too. He did look good. Uh, Gosh to Spear, Dyson Mayo, they're, I mean, they're serviceable. They certainly shouldn't be top two defensemen, but they are here. And this is a team that's not really still trying to win. Uh, the the uh, Armstrong has made it clear that they're building a team. And this year in particular, they really don't want, they're not going to win, try to win. They're trying to get a top five pick in the draft and keep on building this roster. That's why I suppose you bring in Patrick Nemeth, because he's a guy that can make sure that happens. He's terrible. And Troy Stetcher. I think Troy Stetcher will take Timmins' spot. He's a little better than Timmins. But. Uh, Carl Del Malka is just, the bad part is he will have his nights where he stops 55 shots and they get some points. That's why I think they're going to be better than Chicago. Besides that, that I mean, this lineup is the whoever comes up from the AHL, good for them to get some money. Uh, I love this. I want this organization to succeed. I'm not one of those people that are all poo pooey because they have to be in a small arena. So what? You, you, it's going to be a great story for the future. The NHL needs teams like Arizona to succeed if we're going to compete with the NFL and, and MLB. And I want to. I want NHL to be as big as that. And if that's going to be the case, I'm willing to be all the patience needed for a team like Arizona. And they have an owner that doesn't seem to mind to drain his pockets to have it happen. Good for him. Good for you guys that you're not losing the team. Okay, Winnipeg. And, yeah, I have them in sixth. There's a lot, you know, very positive people out there who say that they're going to have a rebound year. Bonus is going to change things up. You know what? It, it could be. Bonus did put a spark under Dallas and who, when Hudobin went on a tear and they made it to the finals in the bubble. He did. I like him as a coach. I do. But I like Paul Maurice as a coach, too, and that wasn't working out too well. I personally just don't see it. And it's not and it's not because I don't like their offense. I do. But they have a, too many guys here. Bonus has got to get Shifley playing defense. That's the first thing I need to see. I think we need to see it. Shifley playing defense. Wheeler playing defense. I don't know what happened to this guy. He used to be one of the best, better defensive forwards in the league, and he just stopped. It was weird. It was after the hit. It, it just seemed that he stopped. He's like, screw it. I'm not going back there then. It's like he said, I'm not going to play that way anymore if I'm going to get suspended and all that kind of stuff like that. And honestly, Mark Shifley, I, and I know you're watching, of course, uh, I don't blame you because I, I, as far as I've said it before, I don't think you really did anything wrong with that hit, except maybe be a little bit over aggressive. But anyways, we'll go into that. I did a video on it as well, but it's not really the right attitude to have. Hopefully you can turn him around, start playing defense again, Blake Wheeler as well, but I can't bank on that. And if it doesn't happen, these guys can score, but it, it's not going to matter because Baron Lowry and Appleton is an okay third line. Lowry gets again overrated. He's not as good defensively as people make him out to be. Um, but he's a big guy and pe- you know he, he hits people and all that kind of stuff like that. And as you go down the lineup, Toninato, Gustafson, and Sam Gagne, uh, they're bottom six here. Baron. Morgan Barron is probably going to be a good player, but he's just a kid, just a young player. 
And the rest of these guys, I don't know, they just don't do anything for me in this bottom six. They definitely need to add to it. The good news is it's one of the easiest places to add is the bottom six, right? So next we go to defense. Joshua Morrissey might be one of the most overrated defensemen in the league. He's okay offensively, not really that great defensively. Simple as that. Um, Dylan DeMello, good defensively, no offense to be had. Shouldn't be a top pairing. This shouldn't be a top pairing at all. I don't even think why. Neil Pionk's got to be on that top pair. He's the best defenseman Winnipeg has. He's very good. Brendan Dillon is not bad. And then Logan Stanley and Nate Schmidt, that's horrible. Nate Schmidt does virtually nothing for this team. Virtually nothing. He doesn't go, he's terrible defensively. He's not very good offensively. And he's getting worse every year. He just keeps on dropping every year. So I just don't think this defense can be made better by bonus. I'm sorry. I can't. Not better enough for this team to be a playoff team. Connor Hellebuck's a beast, but what are you going to do with this defense? Really? And the forwards not coming back and all that stuff like that. They're just asking way too much of any goaltender to get them into the playoffs. And now you have David Riddich to boot, who is just not an NHL goaltender. Let's face it. The window sample size is large enough with Riddich for the last couple of years that this guy can't stop pucks. So Hullabuck is all alone on an island there. You got to hope that Dylan Sandberg can take a spot um, on defense, but I just don't like it. I didn't really, I didn't like Winnipeg last year before the season started, and I don't like him this year. I didn't have him in the playoffs last year. I don't have him this year. Rick Bonus, if he does get these guys in the playoffs, give the guy the Adams, maybe. Because, well, go look at my Atlantic. I think you'll find the Adams winner there. Winnipeg Jets fans, Arizona, Chicago, everybody, subscribe to my YouTube channel, comment in the comment section if you disagree with me, or if you agree with me, or if you just want to comment at all. I'll always talk to you. I'll give you my opinion. I like your opinion, and if I disagree, I'll tell you. If I don't, whatever. And then at the end of the year, you can give your, hey, you know what? I told you so, and I love that. That's how I learn, and that's how I have fun with the game. Next, Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars, and I don't think the Dallas Stars make the playoffs. Um, I've been on the fence about Pete DeBoer now for a while. I don't think it was his fault for Vegas. I don't think he was terrible in St. Louis. I'm still not sure about this guy as a, as a, as a coach. I do know that he was brought in. He's an offensive-minded coach. There's no doubt about that. This is a guy that thinks offense more than any coach they've had in quite a while. Certainly bonus. So this team is going to not have an opportunity to play offense. The question I have is, is that the right way to go with this roster? I think bonus probably had it here. He identified that this roster doesn't have enough scoring to play to take many risks at all. That's why they played like they did. And Jason Robertson's going to pot his for sure. Ropo Hints, love him. Joe Pavelski, ageless, fantastic. But after that, Mason Marchman had a good year in Florida. His only good year so far at 27 years old. Do I think he can repeat it? I think he's about a 40-point guy. Possibly, something like that. Hopefully he surprises me because I love guys like him that can put up points. And he just keeps on getting points and points and points because I just love players like that. Um, but Tyler Sagan, and look at who made it on the right side here. Ty Delandria. Ty Delandria didn't have many points in the AHL. He is not really a big point producer overall. This is a guy that's in here to go get the puck for the other guys. He works his bag off, Ty Delandria. And he earned himself a roster spot, I believe, because DeBoer Sog wants everybody to work like him, including Sagan. And now Delandria is on Sagan's line. I think this is more 
people are saying, well, you know, this is Sagan's going to help Delandria become a better player. I think it's the other way around. I think Delandria is going to hopefully put a spark into Sagan. And, uh, you know, Sagan has had injuries, so we'll see what's coming. But honestly, I'm not confident. Jamie Ben, Wyatt Johnston. Now, this kid in college, or our last year of junior, Wyatt Johnston was insane. He was picked up 23rd overall in 2021. Check out his numbers last year with OHL. 124 points in 68 games. And if you think I'm anti-Dallas by putting him out of the playoffs, you would be absolutely incorrect. Because I think they are one of the best drafting teams in the NHL. Look at the guys they have in their lineup, tight like Ty Delandria, Ropo Hints, Jason Robertson, all later picks that they keep on nailing, and it looks like they got one here. If Wyatt Johnston turns out to be beasting in the NHL, I may change my mind on Dallas missing here, but I gotta see it. It's one thing in junior, and now you're in the NHL. We'll see what happens here. But he's a big kid, solid center, has point, has ability to put up points. So with Jamie Benn and Dennis Gurianoff, funny that Gurianoff is getting a good chance here with uh, DeBoer, probably wanting to build up confidence. These are the guys that they need more from. Sagan, Ben, Gurianoff, Kivaranta. Uh, Faxa and Glenn Denning, they just are what they are. They win face-offs and stuff. You know, Fourth-line guys, it's whatever. But those guys are huge. They need big get years from those guys for me to turn my, turn my uh, decision as to whether they make the playoffs or not. I don't like their bottom six when you look at the rest of the league. I just don't think there's enough depth there. There's some decent depth in the organization overall, but not spectacular for replacement players when these guys get injured. Uh, Demiani, Carlson, Ola, like these guys haven't did anything in the NHL yet. Riley Tuft, Kiro, it's not spectacular. On defense, you got to like their defense. He's going to... Given the opportunity with DeBoer, he'll probably go off offensively this year. I like the fact that they're playing him with Colin Miller, over underrated player, now finally getting a good opportunity to get some minutes here. L Nils Lundqvist, sneaky pickup, paid a high price for him, though. I'm going to be really interested to see what he looks like here. He's a bit of a question mark with Essel and Dell, who obviously is not very good. Uh, defenseman, solid all around, nothing wrong with that. Ryan Suter, still ageless. And Yanni Hockenpah is a good defensive guy. There's, that defense is fairly strong. I got nothing against it. And, of course, then we go to goaltending. You got Jake Ottinger. He is the guy here. He is so good he could get him in the playoffs almost by himself. I, I was hesitant to leave Dallas out because of Ottinger. But because of the rest of the lineup, I just don't think the scoring. If they're going to play offensive, I think they're just going to have to rely on him too much. If they do make it, though, watch for Jake Ottinger as for uh, for the Vezina this year. Could definitely see that. All right, Dallas Stars fans, let me know what you think. Cut me up in the comment section. Tell me why your team is going to make the playoffs, and I don't know what I'm talking about, and all those sort of things like that. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. St. Louis Blues. And here's the thing. Wild card. I think the wild card is going to be between L.A., Vegas, and the St. Louis Blues. And I'm not 100% sure who's going to win it. Um, I wasn't high on them last year. They were better than I thought. And here I am going back to the wagon saying that it's um, not going to be a great year for them. I think they're a bubble team, and this is why. I like Brandon Saad. It's okay. Ryan O'Reilly is one of the best two-way centers in the league. His offense is dipped, but with his defensive ability, it doesn't really matter. He goes up against everybody's top line, and 
smokes them defensively. And that's huge. Absolutely enormous. He's also on a contract here, so watch out. See what happens there. Jordan Cairo, can he do it again after a great year? He started to slip last year in the second half. And everybody knows who Jordan Cairo is this year. He's not going to be able to sneak away in the spots and everybody go, who is that? Who is, who is Cairo? Wow. So I have a feeling there's going to be a bit of a regression for Jordan. Yeah, this is the year where he's got to get used to everybody knowing who he is. Love this line here. Pavel Bichnevich, Robert Thomas, and Tarasenko. To me, this is the number one offensive line. Um, Bichnevich is one of the best five on gut five guys on the league in the league. St. Louis got him for a song when they got him. It's amazing. And I love Robert Thomas. Vladimir Tarasenko has something to prove. I don't know if he's going to get traded or not. Somebody tell me there. Has he said he doesn't want to get traded now? Does he want to resign? Does St. Louis want to resign him? I don't know, but he's going to be heavily motivated to have a great year, which I don't even know if he needs it because he's one of the most consistent players that the league has seen. He's very consistent. And this line in general, to me, is the most consistent line they have offensively. After that, I love Barbashev. I love Shen. Logan Brown is getting the opportunity. So you're saying you love all these guys, Perla. Why do you? Why are you saying that they're going to bubble? Well, I don't know if they're going to bubble. I'm just going by odds here. Um, Walker, Achari, and Topchenko is actually like I like their top twelve. It's not a problem. I still don't like their defense. I don't know what they see in Nick Letty. Colton Pareko's overrated defensively and offensively. As far as I'm concerned, he's not a top right defenseman. Falcon Krug are good. Mikola and Bartuzo are okay. Mikola had a, started having a really good year last year. It's only an okay defense as far as I'm concerned. Maybe below average. And then Jordan Bennington. And that's the thing. I'm putting it as a question mark. His overall regular season work tells me he won't do well in the regular season. Which sucks because he seems to do amazing in the playoffs. But if he doesn't do well in the regular season this year, I, I think St. Louis might miss. I don't know. He's a mystery to me. The kid's got all the talent. He's not a kid anymore. He's 29 years old. It's time to grow up, buddy. He's had maturity issues, really. He was a late maturing defenseman. Uh, attitude. Over a confidence is one thing. Arrogance never is good. Because with arrogance, there's two things that happen with arrogance. One, you tend to be unteachable. Because you don't think you do anything wrong and you think you're better than everybody. And two, when things go south, things generally just fall right off. It just kills you. Because ego gets smashed. And when ego gets smashed, pucks drop in. So I'm leaving this... If Jordan Bennington is as good as he's physically able to be and mentally has matured, St. Louis makes the playoffs no problem. If not, and I think it's a little bit of both, that's why I have them on the bubble. As far as replacement players are concerned, when Perunovic, if he, oh man, this poor kid, injured like this, he could be really derailing his career here it's it's sad to watch scan marco scandal is probably not coming back i loved I, jake neighbors is going to get some looks for sure i love that guy love 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 nikita alexandrov i like josh levo he's uh, whatever he can fill in a role so they got martin firk that can play on the power play that that immense killer shot but on defense it's not much there, man. Matt, like, seriously. Steven Santini, really? The guy couldn't make New Jersey when New Jersey 
had one of the worst defenses in the league. This this is terrible. If there's injuries on D, they're in trouble here in St. Louis. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Tell me what you think, St. Louis fans. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know. Love talking to you. Let me know where you place everybody, too. Next, Nashville Predators. Uh, third in the division, I believe. And I think they're going to have a strong playoffs. They could even be higher than this. Oops, i got to go here. Um, oops, sure. Uh, yeah, I love to pick up a Nino Nita Rider. I love their depth overall. I find it odd that Kiefer Sherwood made it in here. I guess he really he got I got a goal in his first game. But I you know I thought maybe Zachary Sanford would be in there. I guess it's not too much of a difference. Philip Tomasino was the guy. What happened to him in camp? I don't know. I think he must have come into camp with the attitude that he already got it and maybe wasn't having the intensity that they liked and he needed to go get a check in the AHL. I think he'll be back. I love his talent. He'll probably take Kiefer Sherwood's spot. But Kiefer came in with a thirst to make this lineup, and it's possibly Tomasenko thought he already had it. And Hines doesn't like to see that. You know, I like him as a coach. By the way, how why all the hate for Hines? Because he had a tough time in New Jersey with the super young roster that was no good. And I think that's why, because New Jersey Devils fans are vocal as hell, and it gets out there. But I think Hines is a great coach, and I think this team is going to be do very well. I actually had them first in this division, and the reason why is I think it's really important for Nashville to get things like President's Cups and stuff like that, President Trophy, first in the division, it builds fan base. Right, but I changed my mind, and I'll continue when I, I'll talk about that when I get to the defense. Nita Ryder, Ryan Johansson, Kiefer Sherwood, solid two way line. I like Ryan Johansson, good second line center, works fine there. Uh, Granlin, Forsberg, and Matt Duchesne is fantastic, great line. Uh, offense by committee here as. The offense is spread out through no superstars, which can bode well. Less ego. Uh, Yakov Trenin must have come to camp prepared. Love it. I still think this guy has some offensive upside. And so do they. Putting him on the third line here with Colton Sissons and Tanner Jeannot. If I get a Nashville Predators jersey, Tanner Jeannot will be my guy on it. I absolutely Love him. It's a beast. Two-way guy, great. Does everything you love. Scraps it out there, fights, scores. Love those guys. Love, love, love. Cole Smith, made it. Good for you, Cole. Cody Glass, love to see this kid who had confidence problems make the roster. And Eli Tobin, and they got a kid line on the fourth line. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about this lineup in general, to tell you the honest truth. When you get to the defense, you got Roman Josie and, Ale and one of the most underrated defensemen in the league, and Alexander Carrier. Awesome defenseman. And, of course, Roman Josie. I mean, do you need to say any more about him? He could win at Norris again. Offensively amazing. He's the straw that turns... He's the straw that stirs the drink in this lineup with Forsberg, right? But the reason why I think they're going to not win the division, and this is going to sound weird, is because of Ryan McDonough. Not because I don't like Ryan McDonough. I love him. He's an amazing defenseman. But Ryan McDonough comes from Tampa Bay Lightning, who were the masters of pacing themselves throughout the year. Nashville last year made themselves an identity for being a warrior team. They have their identity now. The you know, problem is they fought, made every game a war all the way through their 82-game season, and you just can't do that, man. 
Look at Tampa Bay. They, they pace themselves throughout the year. There are some games where you're like, they play in the perimeter. They just don't want to get injured. And they're probably going to lose that game and they don't care. And I think Mc, Brian McDonough is probably going to be saying, okay, guys, this isn't a war tonight. Let's just go out there and see if we can get a win, move on, stuff like that. And uh, I think Nashville is so good, they'll be able to afford to do that. I love this roster. Uh, Ekholm playing on his offside with McDonough, if that works, that's one of the best shutdown pairings in the league. And it's their second pairing. Freaking love it. Fabro, Lausanne. He's getting better in Nashville. He's not very good, but he's getting better. They seem to be very high on him. Hard for me to argue with Nashville when it comes to defensemen. They have been insane at bringing up defensemen like Dante Fabro and uh, Roman Josie and Alexander Carrier, and the list goes on and on and on. They're awesome at bringing up defensemen, so I will say nothing about Jeremy Lauzon being in there. Juicy Soros could have a Vesna this year. Love him. Kevin Lankinen, one of the most underrated pickups this year in the summer. He was very good in Chicago. Chicago was just diabolically bad. And solid backup. I think they got a ringer there. Certainly better than Riddich by a long shot. So when Philip Tomasino comes back to fill out this roster, and I'm sure he will, I love this lineup. I think they're going to have a great year. I'm just putting them third because I have a feeling that McDonough is going to teach these guys to kind of pace yourselves throughout the year. We don't need to be the number one. We can be down here and not be injured and be a little more rested for the playoffs. Next, Colorado Avalanche. Colorado Avalanche second place. And just like I was talking with Nashville, and actually they did it last year, even though they almost won the President's Trophy, they're going to pace themselves again as well. They were doing it last year. There was games against Arizona and stuff. Like, they didn't even hit or nothing. They almost won the game because they know they can win the game even playing a perimeter-type game against Arizona. So why go out there and grind it out and start a war with these guys? If They were already up ahead in the standings. Why risk an injury in this? You lose, you lose. Who cares? Doesn't do anything. That's the kind of stuff I think they'll do again, which is why I have them second in this division, not because I don't think they're the best team. I do think they're the best team. The big thing you're going to want to talk about here, of course, is Kadri moving on. What are they going to do with their second line center? Alex Newhook is going to beast out this year. I know it. I love this guy. He's ready for the spot. Is he going to get 100 points like Kadri? No, probably not. But he's going to be good enough for sure, I believe. Um, when Landis God comes back, if they don't put him with McKinnon and Ranton, in which they may, Lekkonen will come back, and that will be an incredible two-way line. Absolutely incredible. And that's the awesome thing about this lineup. I've mentioned it a million times before. Lekkonen, McKinnon, Rantanen, all of them. Maybe JT Comfort might be the least when talking about this. And I don't know about Bleed and Sedlak, but I do know that, and Ben Myers, because I don't have enough of uh, uh, analytics window to tell you. But Joe Sakic is probably the biggest analytics guy out there. My bet is all these guys are analytically, analytically off the charts. Okay, that's what makes them incredible. The two-way forward, forwards on this team are insane. And I don't think that's going to change. And I think Alex Newhook will be fine. Rodriguez will go down with Comfer and O'Connor. That's a great third line. And... Um, Cogliano will go down in the fourth, and he's spectacular defensively. I, they're going to make it even not trying some of the time. Maybe even they win the division. They're just that good. Because when you got the defense, Kale McCarr is probably the best defenseman we've seen since Orr. Bobby Orr. 
I said it. I don't, she's incredible. I've seen Bork. I saw Pronger. Nicholas Lidstrom, Kale McCarr. I'm not going to put him over Lidstrom, Nicholas Lidstrom yet, but I think he will be. I really do. This guy has mad skills all over the place and incredible defensively. Um, could have a hundred and some point season this year. He's that good. He's going to do things that we haven't seen. Nicholas Lidstrom was an amazing defenseman, especially for the time. But I think he, I think McCarr is going to end up being better. And you got Devon, Devon Taves, who I said when he was an Islander, I remember I, I had a Marner trade to the Islanders because of their cap situation. I thought, and I had a bunch of players going back, Wallstrom and stuff like that. And I had Devon Taves on there, and everybody in Toronto land was like, what, Devon Taves? What the, you think we're going to give up Marner? Look, Devon Taves, where is he now? The guy is a freaking beast. Beast. You could see it when he was young, and you can see it now. Great defenseman. Bowen Byram, insane. Taking out Samuel Gerrard, who is an amazing defenseman. All of these guys. This is a top, four of the top six here on this team would be number one defenseman on a lot of teams out there. This defense is cray-cray. Josh Manson adds into the mix. He's kind of gone down defensively in his older age, but he's still serviceable, no doubt about that. Eric Johnson, eh, same sort of thing, but they're definitely good enough to go with that top four. The biggest question mark, of course, is Alexander Gorgiev, who had a diabolically bad year last year with New York, playing in behind Shesterkin. I'm going to guess the Sackick knows what he's talking about. I mean, this is a team that made Grubauer look like Grubauer looked like he was a Vesna candidate. Well, he was a Vesna candidate, and they made him look like one. Kemper last year, they won a cup with some of the worst goaltending I've ever seen in the playoffs for a team that's won a cup. They're that good. So Alexander Gorgiev, can, if he had anxiety issues or whatever, being behind Chesterkin, I don't know, confidence. At the very least, he can be, you know, rest easy that he's behind the best defensive team in the league. He'll probably end up looking great, is what I'm trying to say. So, I'm not terribly worried about that, honestly. It did raise my eyebrows when it happened, but I'm not terribly worried about it. They still got Darren Helm to come back. I mean, this, and then, of course, they have replacement players like Martin Kaut, who should be ready soon. Maltsev can play. Jason Magna. Yeah, I mean, it's not spectacular, but they got guys that can play. And with this roster, they don't need much. Just guys to be able to fill in for a little bit, unless it all goes south and there's injuries for days. But you can say that about just about any team, right? All right, Minnesota. Yes, Minnesota. I have number one, believe it or not. Why do I have Minnesota over Colorado. Um, and that is simply because this team, I believe, needs it for their fans to, to win more games. They're also a team that I don't think has really learned the value of being uh, kind of pacing themselves throughout the year yet. It, it's, it takes like a long playoff run or two to really get that into your mind that, hey, you know what? You're kind of burnt out. You got to be honest with yourself. Also, they just have that offensive game that is killer in the regular season. And they have Marc-Andre Fleury. You say Marc-Andre Fleury, he only had a 2.91 and a .908 in Chicago. Chicago was horrible last year. Any goaltender that had a save percentage over nine for Chicago last year is amazing. That's how bad they were defensively. And they're going to be worse this year, but that's another story. Marc-Andre Fleury at 38 years old, the question mark is his age. I think he crushes it. I think that 
Um, and then, of course, when he came over from Minnesota or from Chicago, he didn't really do well. He didn't do great. He didn't do well starting in Chicago either. He didn't actually hit it out of the park starting in Vegas. It seems to take Mark Andre Fleury a while to get used to the defensive systems and stuff like that. Once he's in sync with it, though, he's insane. I would love to see him win another one. Love, love, love. All right. And then you got just stupendous top scoring here with Kaprizov and Zuccarello and Ryan Hartman reinventing his career in here. You got an amazing coach in Dean Evison. Tyson Jost getting a chance with uh, Greenway being hurt. That's pretty cool. On what is an amazing shutdown line when Greenway is in there with Erickson and Felino. And Sam Steele looked good in the preseason. Doesn't tell me all that much, but I think he got a little stale in Anaheim. We'll see how he turns out because he's got Boldy and Goudreau on his wing. Wow. That should give you a little bit of confidence when you got Matthew Boldy as your right winger. I still think Boldy's going to take Zuccarello's spot, but we'll see. That kid is freaking nuts. Love him, man. Love, 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 love. And then Dewar, get this Marco Rossi looking like a beast after being out with his COVID issues and all that kind of stuff like that. And Brandon Duheim. Then one of the most underrated defenses in the league. Every any Minnesota fans know this very well. With Goligoski, Spurgeon, Brodine, and Dumba. Dumba's not great defensively, but that top three is is smoking. And then Kalen Addison's going to get a good chance. And Jacob Middleton was a great pickup. Their top six is lovely. So I just think with their offense, the type of game they have, and their maybe more desire to win the division than. Maybe Colorado would be at this point and stuff like that, that they will win this division. Injuries come upon them could be a little bit difficult. I'm not, unlike other teams, there's a lot of young players here I'm not really sure about. Batan can fill a role. Beckman, uh, yeah, defense, there's not much really there. I'm a little concerned about that. I'm a little concerned if injuries start to sleep in, uh, slip in. Uh, what do they do have, uh, what's his name there, Andre Schuster they got. But I think they could do some more. John Merrill comes back, that helps on the defense. I think they'll be okay. But Dean Evison seems to be able to work with a, incredible with lineups too. That's one of the reasons why I just love Dean Evison. And I think they're going to want to really get that winning feeling this year in the regular season. They might burn themselves out for the playoffs. But if there's a team that is has a desire to win the division and maybe even the presidents to bring it home to Minnesota, to bring those fans something to be really excited about, it's Minnesota. All right, that's my full 42 for the Central Division. Tell me what you think in the comment sections. Subscribe to my channel. Tell me your picks. Tell me if I'm out of my out of my off my chain or whatever. But watch as the season goes on. I did really well at this last year. And I do extremely well at NHL hockey picks. And you could be part of it. I'll put the link in the bio. Get involved with bpalpicks.com. Only if you like making money and enjoy the frolic. This is frolic if you don't know. I have people ask me, what's frolic? This is it. Okay, bye.